good evening guys welcome to the program today we are going to see one more uh, concept uh, green purchasing you may be at any part of supply chain but it, this is very important and evolving concept this can become a, a major domain in the future because there is a consciousness on the customers uh, whatever they are purchasing they want uh, it to be a green product but uh, this is also being uh, misused at many places we will see what are those uh, situations of course we should uh, first see what are the methods in which uh, we can do the green purchasing hope you are all able to hear me and see the screen if uh, everything is okay can you please comment on the linkedin so that i can proceed further before uh, digging into the subject let me introduce um, uh, myself uh, my name is patabi raman this is my linkedin profile uh, i am searchable by uh, supply chain master in the linkedin as far as my educational background is concerned i am an engineer with a pg degree in management and data science i have been working uh, for uh, two and a half decades in this large multinational organization predominantly in supply chain uh, domain okay at various level i have been handling different sub domain in the supply chain in the last four years i have been uh, working as a head of uh, uh, current organization known as thoughtware training private limited as far as my certification is concerned these are globally recognized certification from apix and demand driven institute i am also a certified purchasing manager as well as project management professional i uh, apart from uh, qualified in business analytics hope all of you are able to listen are you able to hear my voice can you please comment in the linkedin regarding our organization we are a four years old organization based in bangalore we provide both consulting and training in the field of uh, supply chain and uh, allied domains including purchasing we operate under the brand name of uh, expert acm now before going to the topic we have to understand uh, what does uh, sustainability means because here we are talking more uh, number of uh, issues than only the Uh, green purchasing because purchasing is one aspect of uh, the entire activities which uh, we are doing in the uh, supply chain okay uh, we have to understand what are those activities and where we can make a uh, green in those activity uh, before that let us also understand what we mean by sustainability sustainability is something uh, related not only to the environment it also uh, is related to social development so we have to see on the both the angles when we talk about sustainability of course green uh, means it is uh, more or less related to environment but uh, when you see the overall aspect of uh, sustainability it includes a social uh, development also when we talk about uh, supply chain uh, end to end there are so many activities involved uh, where you can introduce green in fact it can start from the drawing board when you are designing a product that time is the uh, most appropriate time where you can uh, think for sustain uh, sustainability in fact there are uh, some concepts coming up uh, like design for sustainability design for logistic which is picking up because of uh, customer uh, growing uh, importance uh, so when we talk about end to end supply chain it involves uh, starting from design then uh, today's topic is on uh, purchasing where how you can introduce green in purchasing of course uh, if you take a overall scope even the production also accounts for uh, sustainability packaging uh, logistic and also now we are talking about circular supply chain it means that at the end of the life period of a product you are going to get back the item 
and then do the recovery maybe you are doing repair or refurbishment remanufacturing reimaging all such process and uh, reintroduce this product back into the cycle uh, and you know this cycle can continue multiple times and this is what we call as a circular supply chain so in today we will focus specifically on uh, purchasing okay before that we will see what exactly we can do in product design cleaner production and packaging of course these are all each one is a version uh, uh, and we have to discuss everything in detail maybe subsequently in some uh, other days program we can uh, see when we talk about product design you know at that stage itself we can design the product in such a way that it uh, consumes less material less energy you know there are some brands of air conditioner or refrigerator giving this uh, energy stores okay uh, normally four star five star or highly energy efficient devices in fact all such uh, thing happens at a design stage apart from that when we talk about cleaner production of course here we have to also see how far you are using the material from local uh, sources how uh, uh, greener are those material uh, uh, what is the life of this uh, material also are you going to use any hazardous material in uh, the production all this are covered under cleaner production when we talk about patch, uh, packaging this is what is the main contributor in supply chain and uh, you can uh, see lot of uh, forest is being uh, destroyed to make uh, wooden boxes or pallets or it could be even paper cartons okay this is where we can introduce lot of uh, re returnable packaging or to start with the elimination of packaging so this gives a overall idea it is not only the purchasing but uh, it covers the entire uh, domain when it comes to green procurement we are focusing one small portion of the entire sustainability activity that to what is more related towards uh, procurement here what does it mean is inclusion of sustainability issues in the procurement strategy in fact this is where sourcing uh, people can involve and they should align the uh, sourcing strategy in line with corporate uh, strategy okay in all procurement uh, decision uh, or when you are making the contract that should be a form a part of your contract okay so uh, other part which we are not going to see is ethical perspective uh, here it means that how the labors are being employed in your suppliers are they being treated uh, fairly is there any discrimination child labor is there or is there any problem uh, with respect to payment minimum wages all these are there but today let us focus on green po uh, procurement here it is more focused towards the environment of course there are a lot of drivers and barriers for the sustainable pro procurement you know drivers could be it can be your own customers customers are uh, nowadays demanding green product okay they have become more conscious towards the environment so they expect a green product maybe some of the countries they are introducing some compliance uh, related things so possibly you have to also comply with that apart from that internally possibly based on your corporate uh, strategy you want to do more towards sustainability then all these factors should be considered when you are uh, making a sourcing uh, strategy okay coming to the procurement uh, framework uh, of course you should uh, know how we can implement this type of green purchasing you cannot go and implement to all suppliers or for that matter all skus you know you may be procuring thousands of item or skus from hundreds of vendor uh, so we may have to prioritize uh, the item and accordingly take suitable actions uh, with respect to green purchasing in this respect we use something called crawlgic matrix i hope uh, if any of uh, the participants are from purchasing you might be knowing what is crawlgic uh, matrix anyone has heard 
purchasing guy if you are watching live you can always comment in the linkedin do you know what is krolgic uh, matrix what for it is used any idea of course you can see the image on the screen is there anyone uh, from purchasing participating in this live uh, session we have to classify all our materials into four category as per this krolgic matrix based on supply risk as well as profit uh, impact you can see on x and y axis which means uh, the item which are having higher risk as well as higher profit impact becomes a strategic item on the other end you will have a non critical item uh, which is uh, having less profit impact as well as less uh, supply uh, risk okay so uh, on the other hand you may also have some item where the supply risk is less but the profit impact can be high and on the other hand you may also have some item where the risk is high whereas the impact could be less but still you need all the item irrespective of this item you know all the items are required as per bill of material to build any uh, product maybe here we are classifying this item based on criticality or strategic in nature when you do this it helps in terms of developing some strategy for green procurement especially you have lot of opportunity to collaborate or ally make alliance with the vendors uh, and it is always recommended for strategic and critical item you need a better cooperation and alliance with the uh, supplier okay this is where you need to have a long term contract and in that uh, contract you need to include this uh, green procurement or sustainability practice uh, in uh, those contracts of course when you come to non critical item you are not going to spend more time and also you are not going to develop any vendor here uh, possibly 50 to 60% of your purchase can fall under a non critical it could be commodities or it could be your uh, mro items or even it could be uh, any general purpose item uh, where you don't uh, focus more on such item but still uh, you don't have an alliance you don't have a cooperation or collaboration in such case what are the methods you can introduce uh, green purchasing in uh, for uh, doing such activity you know leverage and bottleneck are in between when you know what you are going to do on both extreme then you can moderate by offering via media solution for other two category so we have seen for strategic item or critical item you need a collaboration you need an alliance with the vendor you need to develop uh, the vendor by including sustainable practice and it is possible when you have an alliance it is definitely possible anyone is aware what we can do for non critical item maybe these are standard item commodities is it possible to include any sustainability in our uh, procurement practice Ajay Ram says he is in purchasing. Can you comment what type of uh, practice you can introduce uh, in uh, green pr procurement for some of the item where you don't uh, have a strategic alliance with the vendors, but you go to the market, you buy as per the market price and then get those item. Any idea Ajay Ram or anyone uh, who are in the purchasing? how you can handle such uh, type of uh, purchasing uh, once again to include green uh, purchasing in that anyone has an idea how you can handle purchase of uh, standard products where you don't uh, want to spend time in developing the vendors so what are the possibility is there for non critical items so that you can efficiently order and uh, standardize uh, the process 
okay ajay ram says no idea no worries uh, let us see what are the factors in fact uh, some of the process are developed in the western countries and still we are very much lagging behind uh, in those aspect we will see some of the ideas uh, in the coming slide one is known as eco labels uh, i am not sure anyone has heard about eco label the if a vendor can always get certified from a third party uh, for following sustainability practices it is something similar to iso there are some organization doing the certification but uh, still this practice has not uh, become so much popular in indian operation but if you see in western countries you may see the products coming with uh, these type of eco labels okay for you if you are procuring standard item if you find this labels are available you can opt for such item and you, you are guaranteed now the question could be who is those people who are certifying it are they authorized are they doing proper certification we have to keep in mind because in india the situation is not okay you may see this organic products everywhere you can see people are saying uh this item is organic that item is organic especially it started in groceries but now they have come to even chicken chicken item they are saying this item is a organic item i am not sure who how they are qualifying uh, such a statement and who is authorizing or certifying such a requirement okay so we have to be also careful who is providing this uh, label of course the western countries they have uh, this format especially for standard item this is one way and there is something called fair trade uh, arrangement especially this is uh, more related to ethics uh, management how do your vendor treat uh, their uh, okay treat their employees possibly here we are also talking in terms of uh, helping the products from Uh, the developing countries okay no discrimination among the countries maybe even minority region or uh, least developed region how you can do it even there are some certificates or labels available for purchasing such product you can uh, see such uh, label on the screen it's called fair trade label it focuses both on ethical aspect and aim to help producer from developing countries out of poverty once again i am not sure whether we have recognized a certifying agency in india it may be possible but uh, we also should take responsibility to develop uh, such a mechanism where we can get such a green product uh, and uh, somebody else uh, is a neutral party is authorizing it because government has not uh, bought any such uh, legislation so far anyone has any idea uh, on uh, this uh, fair trade or eco label have you come across such uh, products in your purchase you can always type in the comment okay coming next is marine seaward ship council maybe this is related to fishing uh, items possibly in the retail trade uh, Uh, there are some councils uh, available uh, with respect to frozen fish uh, producers it uh, focuses on setting standard for the sustainability of wild captured fishing okay uh, so the western countries even they have gone to the extent of protecting uh, the wild uh, captured fishing so they have established some process uh, in which uh, this business has to be done so you can also see a certification from uh, this msc marine stewardship uh, council then comes the rainforest alliance here uh, possibly you know we are uh, using wood paper in our packaging or also in many of the products we are uh, forced to use uh, these type of uh, items by destroying the forest uh, possibly they also uh, there is association uh, called rainforest alliance uh, which is very old maybe established in uh, 1987 they have also prescribed procedure 
on how uh, green uh, or sustainable uh, thing can be uh, maintained in such an environment okay uh, so if you are taking any such wood product or paper product you can watch out for this type of uh, uh, certification coming to carbon trust you know there are also products which can uh, emit the greenhouse effect or emit carbon dioxide uh, possibly there are some organization who release guidelines on how to manage uh, such uh, 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 activity so that the carbon emitted is uh, lower okay so they also have some labels of course we have to explore all of this coming uh, next one is iso 14001 especially this is a certification related to environmental protection you may also look for vendors who have this certification it doesn't always guarantee that uh, a supplier is following all the green practices but at least you know they have a procedure and they have a understanding about the requirement of iso in maintaining environment so you can also look for vendors having this type of certifications okay coming next is life cycle assessment you know many times when we are purchasing item we look at only at the purchase price sometime you know maybe we are looking at a landed cost landed cost could be in terms of uh, uh, including transportation and customs duty if at all included but uh, the next one is a life cycle assessment this is where you know there are uh, many activity related to maintenance of the product comes into picture how far energy is used or fuel is used uh, also in terms of repair maintenance downtime all this has to be accounted when you are purchasing any of the item it may not be for component this may be more suitable if you are looking for purchase of any capital goods so normally we, we we used to do such comparison in terms of life cycle or total cost of ownership okay so i have given a brief idea about the entire process on sustainability of course it's a very wide topic and growing topic if you need any doubts or clarification you are always welcome to reach to us you can see visit our website given in the screen also our executives whatsapp number are provided we provide both consulting and training in the areas of supply chain purchasing logistic and one of our popular program is on supply chain analytics which is globally recognized and participants are, are from across the world uh, we also have a program uh, specifically for purchasing uh, guys a global uh, level of our training is provided apart from live program we also have self paced program you are always welcome to visit this particular site so if anyone has any doubt uh, clarification you can type on the linkedin so that uh, i can respond to it do you like the program was it uh, interesting and meaningful to you i can watch your linkedin comment if you are in linkedin if you have any doubts you can always uh, clarify or you can leave your feedback do you like the program was it uh, interesting you can also propose any title for uh, future discussion yeah ajay ram uh, if you are looking for any specific uh, topic you are always welcome to uh, comment uh, we can discuss at least weekly four or five days in a week i am doing of course these are all 
introductory uh, session which will uh, give you some light into uh, the topics what we are discussing and you are always welcome to reach out to me or our staff for any doubts clarification or even if you need uh, some training for any global certification you are welcome to reach out to me and thanks for watching have a nice evening